Uh, I'm Da today. Uh, I'm here to tell you how we diagnose network issues by analyzing in network packet trace with DSHARC. DSHARC is a general form framework designed for this. This is joint work with Microsoft. Network reliability is critical for uh, modern, dis uh, mo modern distributed systems and applications. An ISP outage can cause millions of users to disconnect from their internet, and a uh, small downtime in the cloud network can lead to millions of lost revenue. Uh, when large network in the companies or ISP has outages, it becomes a news headline. For example, a small configuration error in the backbone of the network makes a lot of customers offline. This brings huge impact. There have been a lot of work targeting on making the network reliable. Network re operators use them to monitor or debug their network uh, as their first attempt. However, they have some fundamental limitations. Some work required to have uh, some require have ha some, some 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 work required to the support from the end host. On one hand, they are limited by the visibility, uh, especially in case where problems cause uh, packets not arrive at the end. Uh, on the other hand, some, uh, sometimes the end host is out of the scope, which the operators are not uh, able to access. Some works strongly leverage some uh, uh, properties in the topology or new features in the uh, hardware. These work are not practical because topology varies in different uh, companies and scenarios, and it is unlikely the comedy switch will quickly adopt uh, these features and replace all of the uh, switch in the network. Some work are not general enough. They mainly focus on specific problems like locating package jobs. So with this work, network operators sometimes can do little thing to know what happened in their network. Also, these tools can provide limited information to locate the root cause uh, of a network issue. Because of these limitations, in today's production network, Operator have to check the net in network packet trace when all the first attempt debugging tool fails. They regard the in network packet trace, a ca a trace as the last resort. The trace capture packets at each hop provides a full view of packet path through the network. Recent work like Airflow can set up mirror rules on switches and has already demonstrated that. Uh, how, uh, however, even with this, uh, with, with this trace in hand, operators still lack a, a handy tool to analyze them. Next side uh, share the same vision that aim to debug the network on top of the full visibility of a package journey. However, it fails because it is not flexible and practical enough. Analyzing such traits are challenging because of the following uh, reasons. The first challenge is the volume. Currently, collection infrastructure are connected with servers with 10 gig or 40 gig links. In the slowest case, 3.33 megapackets per second packets are sent to the collectors. To consume such high volume of traces, people have to write program to, un uh, to analyze them. This brings the second challenge. The analysis logic varies case by case. For example, logic to detect a loop or localize a packet job is completely different. This makes the analysis tools ad hoc and hard to reuse. To make things concrete, let me go through an example. Assume we have a function called has route error that takes a sequence of instance of a packet that pass through the network and return true or false to indicate whether it is correct. What can we do to check whether the pass has an error? The first thing we have to do uh, on this is to capture every instance of the packet along the path and send them to a centralized place where we can construct a path, then we can analyze. But obvious, in real network, this solution won't scale. Maybe we need to have multiple collectors and make all the records go to the same place where we can run the checking function. As you can, you can see, we may start to notice this solution will also not scale by itself as well. So maybe we need to shuffle this, distribute this uh, process across multiple nodes that makes all instance belong to the same packets are sending to the same server, perform the checking function, and aggregate the result. This structure looks like MapReduce or SQL group by, and we can run our query in this framework. DShark Design shares the same idea of this. This MapReduce-like structure might solve the challenge for volume and the analysis logic. 
uh, it would be nice if we were done here. However, it is not so easy to find all instances of a packet as it goes through the network since packets are modified by the mid middle boxes. To show you how could this happen, let me show you a real example in Microsoft network where a customer wants to transfer its data from another cloud provider. We collect every trace in the network, which is on the right hand of the upper figure, and do not have vi visibility outside the network, which is on the left hand. I will go through the whole journey of this packet. Below is the corresponding header it looks like. First, the customer traffic leaves the other cloud provider, X network, goes through the ISP, and reaches one of the switches that appear with the ISP. To isolate the traffic, packet is first tagged with a customer-specific VLAN tag. Then it is forwarded into the backbone in a VXLAN tunnel. Once the packet arrives at the destination data center border, it goes through a software load balancer that uses IP IP encapsulation, and is redirected to a VPN gateway server that uses GRE. After that, it arrives at the destination server. Beside the complicated packet encapsulation, different switches at different headers when mirrored packet. This makes the header transformation even more complicated. The re return traffic is similar but simpler. I will, to save time, I'll skip this process. Just to make things uh, concrete again, in some of these hubs, you can see there are four IPv4 layers. Usual tools are not prepared or designed to handle this ambiguity. Now we are ready to talk in details how we implement DSHARC and how we solve these challenges. We derive three, three goals for DSHARC. DSHARC needs to be scalable, broadly applicable, and robust in the wild. Let's first talk about scalability. As I showed before, the structure itself should be scalable. Every component is designed to be worked independently. They are optimized for high performance, and they can run in a highly parallel manner. This solves the scalability problem. Next, let's talk about how to make DSHARC general al applicable. We start from the observation of how operators manually process this trace. To make it concrete, here's, here is the example. When packet pass through the network like uh, when, when packet pass through the network, collection systems like Everflow can set very simple rules on switches to do some simple filter and mirror these rules and send to the uh, closed cl uh, uh, collectors. At the collectors, people normally parse the packet header and, fil and filter a few key fields like five tuple of a flow or a protocol like AT for HTTP uh, to do some filters. This process is similar to filter and partition in SQL or map in MapReduce. Once they get their filter record, they aggregate, them th they aggregate them together. This process is similar to the group by operator in SQL or the shuffle phrase in MapReduce. At last, they perform a deeper analysis logic on this aggregate record to get the result, which is similar to the user-defined function in SQL or reduce phase in MapReduce. Although the function is quite different for different analysis uh, purpose, people always follow the four diagnose step. It's parse, filter, aggregate, and analyze. We want something a lot like MapReduce, but we need to be tight integrated with our collecting infrastructure. This shark design is similar to this. We name components do these things as parsers, groupers, query processors correspondingly. These components are the main components of DSHARC. Another observation we have is we can group analysis logic along two axes. Depends on the uh, scenarios. Operators may want to analyze each single packet on a, a specific hub to check appearance of a packet, or analyze the multiple hub paths of each single packet to show full paths of each packet along the network. Or they can verify multiple packs on a single hub to diagnose some middle box behaviors. Or they can analyze complicated tasks by correlating multiple packets on multiple hubs. This is especially good for complicated that require to bring end information. Inspired by this, we abstract this process to, be, uh, to form DSHARC's programming model. In DSHARC's programming model, it contains two parts, a declarative part in JSON that specify um, 
how packets are parsed, summarized, and grouped, and an and imperative part in C++ to process groups of packets. More specifically, through the declarative part, operators can specify which headers they are interested in, then d -shark filter packets based on this and get aggregate records to perform the deeper analysis defined in the imperative part. We designed the specification uh, to be declarative is because common operators like select, filter, group, fields in the packet headers uh, in the in the packet headers are straightforward to the operators. On the other hand, we make the query functions imperative to offer enough degrees of freedoms for the operators to write their diagnosis logic. This is similar to SQL plus user-defined functions. For our for our route checking example, the packet spec in this case would be all instance of the of, of, of the same packet in and the query function is has route error. Let's see how it works. The spec like looks like this. It describes how to parse and extract field to form a packet summary. A packet summary is a byte array that only contains fields that operators are interested in. The first part is the definition of a packet summary. The key fields indicates which fields are used to, for grouping. These key fields form the signature of, a, of the packet so that packet after modification of middle boxes can still be correlated. Beside the key fields, the additional fields are used for the analysis logic of the query function. The variable in both lists must be defined in the name session, specify where they are in the headers. This spec is the route check spec. Here we still have the problem of the ambiguity caused by multiple single protocol. In this case, we care about the innermost IP and TCP to identify a packet because outer IP and TCP are added by the middle boxes along its, this packet journey in the network. Let's go back to this figure. Our solution for this is to borrow the, syn the index syntax from Python, which allows us to use the negative tail-based uh, indexing. The good thing is that this is general and robust to most complicated headers to reference to the innermost and outermost uh, layers. These layers are commonly used for analysis logic. The other fields can be referred with the corresponding index. Now we successfully specify the innermost IP and TCP with minus one. Another thing we need is, the, is TTL for all IPs which allow us to recover the path by concatenating and sorting all TTLs. Similarly, we borrow the column index syntax uh, to indicate this. Now we get the actual spec. The query function looks like this. It provides an abstraction of a group of packet summaries that share the same signature so that uh, operators can apply the diagnosis logic easily. The function normally takes a summary group and returns a key, uh, key, key value pair. This result can be finally aggregated and uh, returned back to the operators. In this running example that do route error checking, summaries are first sent to the function to reconstruct the path based on the TTLs. The checking function performs, uh, performance, uh, per performs, then the result is sent to the final aggregate before it returns back to the users. We implement this logic in 49 lines of code uh, in practice with this programming log, uh, model. A high-level overview of this looks like this. The parser reads from a packet stream, parse and extract film to form a, uh, a, a summary based on the specification. Then it sends summary that have the same key to the same grouper. The grouper receives summaries aggregate them based on the keys, and send each group to the query processor. The query processor performs an analysis logic on each of the group and return the result back to the user. Another example I want to show here is a, is a load, load balancer profiler. The goal, of this goal, uh, the, the, the goal of this app is to get the statics, uh, statistics of a map between the virtual IPs and the physical IPs. The spec can be written in this way. We, we care the innermost IP and the sequence number since it can identify a packet. We also care about the virtual IP and its corresponding physical IP after the balancer. 
We group the ingress and the egress instance of the packet together and return the mapping between the virtual IP and the physical IP. In practice, this is implemented in 18 lines of code. I have already shown you two applications as examples. Actually, we have built 18 common used apps with D-Shark programming model. Details, please check our paper. I hope I have already convinced you we have achieved these goals. We designed D-Shark to be a MapReduce-like framework that allows components work independently in, and in parallel to make it scale. D-Shark is broadly applicable because of the programming model. We have implemented 18 typical analysis apps. Uh, it is able to handle complicated header transformation by correlating packet uh, instance with signatures. Actually, in practice, there's one more thing that we need to handle, which is the capture noise. We make this shard to tolerant capture noise. Here is how it works. Assume packets come from the internal network will pass through four switches and the left, uh, and left the network boundary and enter an external network without any packet trace visibility. Because capture, rate, uh, because capture packets is in low priority, it has a chance to get dropped somewhere. If a noise drop happens between switch B and the collectors, without any mechanisms, tools might wrongly locate the drop place at switch A. In this case, because collectors still receive trace from switch C, by verifying the next hop, noise drop uh, from switch B can be recovered. Let's think about another noise drop. If the noise drop unfortunately happens at the boundary of switch, switch D, because we don't have visibility to the external network, in this case, using next hop to recover does not work. In D Shark, we leverage the end to end information for TCP traffic by checking whether duplicate TCP sequence number exists. D Shark can, disting can distinguish whether it is a real job or a noise job. Next, let's see the performance of D Shark. To represent commodity servers, we use eight VMs from our public cloud platform. Each has a 16 core, 2.4 uh, gigahertz virtual CPU, 56 gigabytes memory, and 10 gig, uh, 10 gig links. We fed D-Shark with real traces from production to see its performance. In this case, we use a drop localizer qu query to evaluate the overall performance. On a single server, we deployed two parsers and three groupers so that it can reach 3.4 megapacket per second, which is more than the line rate of for a 10 gig link when the uh, packets are 1500 bytes. We scale D shard to multiple servers because we add parsers and groupers in the same proportion, and the hashing in the shuffle achieves an even distribution of, uh, of traffic among them. So the shuffling phase between parsers and groupers will not become the bottleneck. On eight servers uh, that have 16 parsers and 24 groupers in total, D Shark is able to reach 26.4 megapacket per second, which scales nearly linearly. Last, let's see what D Shark finds in production. Our first case focused on providing a software load balancer. We randomly pick a top of rack switch that has an uh, so SLB under it. We feed the shark with a trace that contains all mirror packets that goes forwards a specific virtual IP and the corresponding uh, free physical IP. And, and we, we feed the shark with a trace that contains all mirror packets that goes towards a specific virtual IP and comes out for one, uh, for one hour. Result shows the SLB distribute flows and packets to the six physical IPs evenly. Our second case is loop detection. Currently, loop is, is, is pretty rare in production network. To show the effectiveness of D-Shark, we randomly eject uh, some loops in the trace. D-Shark detects all of them. The third case is to locate uh, packet drops. We feed D-Shark with a trace that contains all packets that originate from or go towards all server in the data center. In this case, we compare D-Shark with a naive solution which directly regard the last hop of a packet as the drop place. We eliminate the top of rack switch and the T2 data center boundary street, uh, switch since the naive solution does not work for drops at the last 
last half of the visibility. Result shows naive approach report around 5,600 drops, whereas d -sharp only reports seven. The reason for this uh, is the capture noise. The drops detected by d -sharp are real because they have the evidence of packet retransmission. To sum up, we present d -sharp, a general and scalable framework for analyzing in-network packet trace collected from distributed devices. d -sharp provides a programming model for operators to specify uh, trace analysis logic without worrying about uh, some complicated artifact in real-world traces, include header transformation, package ca capture noise, and scalability. d -sharp is broadly applicable to different analysis logic. Now I'm happy to take some questions. Hi, yeah, good talk. So one question about uh, the usage for this architecture. Do you plan to expose that as a service to the tenants, or is it just for local like uh, in-house operations? Uh, sorry, can, can you say that again? Like, do you plan to uh, like expose this as a service to tenants running on the cloud, uh, the D Shark? Like, for, for example, for them to look out like whether the drops are happening and they to to, to take some action based on that. Okay, uh, I think the answer for that is is uh, first uh, the visibility or the the, the powerful the, the power of D Shark is rely on the trace, and this is a general framework that you can deploy. Uh, it's not only designed for the cloud environment. If the trace is from the other environment, then it can do on the others. 